Hello uh, and welcome to training unit five, uh, which we're going to focus on industrial Internet of Things communications interoperability. Um, and what we're kind of really going to focus on here. So we've looked at some of the existing protocols that exist within the IoT space, such as MQTT. And we looked at some of the factory protocols, such as OPC UA. Um, but they have their limitations that have to be taken into account. So we're going to discuss that here briefly, and then we will look at some of the technologies or the um, structures that are in place to help overcome these uh, limitations. So the objective is to understand these current limitations of IIoT protocols, uh, in particular in relation to the automation environment, just as we discussed there on the introductory slide. What we look at is this particular presentation, which is the introduction and current IIoT limitations. We look at something called JSON and their structures. We'll talk briefly, very briefly, on Protobuf and how that's used. And we look at a um, technology called Spark Plug B. But let's start with the introduction to current limitation of IIoT protocols. Again, this project is brought to you, um, or this training is brought to you by the Remain Project, co-funded by the European Union. So understanding the limitations of MQTT specifically when it comes to industrial communications is going to be the objective of this um, project. So MQTT, while it's uh, a great protocol um, in terms of being lightweight, relatively easy to set up and use within most environments, um, MQTT itself does not offer any guidance on how to structure data payloads or to set up your devices uh, in terms of categories or namespaces for how to manage data sessions between production and uh, the operational technological environment. And what this basically means is that it's completely up to the person who is um, implementing an MQTT solution within their factory. Let's say in our case, we're focusing on trying to get data out of the factory. And it's com completely up to them on how they categorize the data that they come out, how they structure the data that comes out, how they manage sessions between uh, the clients and uh, brokers or clients and servers on getting data in and out. And what can happen in these cases is that uh, every vendor or every person who's implementing their own solution comes up with a separate way of doing it, which means any two systems that are slightly different won't be able to talk to each other. Um, so it is up to individual users or vendors of IIoT enabled systems to create their own data architecture and payload formatting for data transfer from production to the OT infrastructure. And that approach can create numerous bespoke solutions uh, for interface, creating complex systems that can be very difficult to scale and difficult to maintain and difficult to um, communicate with. So data payload um, is how the data is uh, structured uh, from one um, device to another. To effectively communicate, each device or endpoint that wants to consume or use the data needs to understand how that data is going to be structured. So they need to know the language, the linguistics, uh, what relevant data is where within the data packet that comes along. So they need to speak that same language and if they don't, they can't communicate just like real people, uh, systems are no different. So imagine you have a pro two processes and you have an endpoint, uh, in this case, which is a computer, and expects data as uh, PX spindle with a speed in the format shown there. So the first process sends its data, P1, so the spindle number P1, uh, with 12,000 uh, RPM. And that's exactly in the format that's expected at the endpoint. So the endpoint can take that data, make sense of it, maybe just display it on the computer screen, display it on HMI or forward it on to whoever needs it. But if process two has its own implementation that doesn't adhere to what's expected, you're not going to be able to communicate. And it can be small changes um, that cause the problems. As you can see here, it's not a million miles away um, from what's expected, but it's different enough that you wouldn't be able to communicate with process two, but you could communicate with process one. So in that example, the data endpoint, or in this case, the PC, would need to be programmed to understand the language of both processes. And if you have 100 processes all doing their own thing, that gets very complicated uh, very fast. In addition to data payload, MQTT will offer the functionality of setting up topics for subscription and publish. And again, you could end up um, with numerous solutions for different processes 
uh, if you're not careful. So as shown, MQG allows to create, or as shown previously, MQG allows the creation of topics in the form of topic one, subset one of topic one, subset two of topic one, subset X of topic one. Deciding what subscribes and publishes to what can get complex, again, when there are many, many processes sending and receiving data. So let's say if you had two processes, uh, monitoring temperature, for example, and process one is sending data to temperature one, uh, let's say, uh, degrees Celsius, and the second one is sending it to temperature two degrees Celsius, then you have to have two separate um, treads or two separate namespaces set up to collect that data, where it might make more sense that both processes send to the same topic uh, the same data, but with an extra uh, namespace maybe with their serial number or identifier in there. Setting up these topic schemas can be time consuming and difficult to ensure compliance across multiple devices and vendors. And um, unless you work exclusively in this space, it can be a bit overwhelming for uh, new engineers to do this um, across a range of processes. The other issue is the session state. So with any data network architecture, the network connection state is important, and this is no exception for IIoT based systems. SCADA-based legacy systems use a poll response mechanism, and they do this repeatedly to ensure a current up-to-date knowledge of the status of the connection for all connected devices. Uh, traditional MQTT deployments treat the system as stateless, where the state of the devices and the connections to the data system are unimportant. And this is not an acceptable approach for the majority of industrial implementations because you need to know if your assets are operational or not. Um, so if you don't get data from them, you can understand why. And again, similar to issues with payloads and namespaces, a bespoke approach to understanding the state of all devices could be implemented. Uh, you could use an MQTT polling, where you constantly query a device every second to see if it's still awake, every 10 seconds, every minute, whatever your time might make, uh, time interval might make sense. Or you could use other uh, strategies like report by exception and so on. But again, if you use several strategies, um, then it becomes difficult to manage, difficult to maintain, and difficult to scale, and can make systems in, uh, not able to communicate properly with each other. So the solution to issues with interoperability and management is to use predefined standards if they are available. So if you can get um, everything in your factory talking the same language in the same way, uh, subscribing and publishing to topics that make sense, it makes life um, a lot easier. Not these standards are not always available, but you should try to identify standardized approaches where possible. A one vendor solution, for example, could be a way around this as well, but then you can be quite limited uh, going forward in what you do. For IoT and MQTT infrastructure, any standard needs to address payload structures, topic and namespace structures, and session state management. And in the further work, we're going to look at some of the solutions that exist. So thanks again, this project is funded um, under Erasmus Plus uh, through the European Union. The name of the project is Remain, and you can see the partners and where they're located throughout Europe in the map um, on the screen now.